Shane Vanderson. We'll come back and see if Vanderson, Sugar Shane, can come back and pull it out. Robinson leads by one. We're back to Memphis, Tennessee. This is another wonderfully famous site, the lobby of the Peabody Hotel, twice a day since 1942. The Ducks come out on cue, out of the elevator, into the fountain, and then with a quick cue from their master, back in, out of the fountain, into the elevator, back to where they nest. This is a tradition. Nine, and they're the sightseeing seven, attractions right here in Memphis, Tennessee. Another one's right here at Racquetball Central, Memphis Racquet Club. Shane Sanderson trying to upset the number eight seed, Derek Robinson, Boy. more experience, and Robinson is being tested now. He had a chance to win it five times. Now yeah. Shane Vanderson ties it at 10. And that was a great shot by Shane. Ten. Good re-kill, but a very sluggish-looking point for Derek. He left up his splat and did not come to center court, and Shane's re-kill was up, and I'm not sure why Derek didn't cover that ball. Right up. And he left it short. Showing the serve by Sugar Shane Vanderson. 10, 7, 10. And Robinson serving all tied. He was here at 10 6. Maybe this will relax him now that he's almost blown it. Yep. Oh, kind of get relaxed him. Wow, what a shot by Shane. Derek actually caught a lucky crack on that serve. The ball barely came up out of that side wall. And Shane. Here it is. See, Derek hits that drive serve, barely comes off the side wall, and Shane just flicks his wrist and kills it down the line and actually fell down as he was hitting it. So if he didn't kill it, he would have been in a lot of trouble. Aaron Katz, ex great on the pro tour. You've got tremendous eyes, Aaron. I can see it hit a crack. I'm way behind you on this. It's the glasses, Lee. Whoa, what a shot that was. And this is amazing. This is an amazing turnaround. He looks. Derek hits a pretty good ceiling ball, and Shane hits this overhand splat that he skipped just about every time this match and just rolls he it out. Ten. He has come from down 10 6. Derek Robinson had five chances at least, five or six or seven, to put it away. Did not do it. Left Shane Vanderson in the match. He can win it right here. And here's a setup. In the game, that's not the match. Good get by, Dan by Derek. Oh, a good side out by Derek Robinson. Shane, not sure of the call. I'm not sure of the call either, Leaf. I think he may have skipped that ball. Let's see if that ball skipped. Shane hits a pretty good serve. Derek flicks it up. Shane splats it. Derek gets up and covers it, you'll see. Flicks it up again. Now Derek is going to be covering up on that splat. Ooh, close. Oh, I think he may Hard have skipped that ball. It's right, in the, right. It was very close. Yeah. The electronic sensor up there. Well, maybe it was a justice point. Ten serving eleven. And a skip on the way to the front wall. Now we're tied at eleven. Robinson a chance to come back himself. He was in command of this game. Out in front. Then at 10-6 for forever. Good get by Derek. The ball bounces out. That's a court. great break for Derek. That's one of those unique rules, Leaf, we were talking about earlier. On any other court in the country, that wouldn't happen. But because it's open on the portable court, if the ball hits the floor and then bounces out, it's a play over. And that ball would have been a setup for Shane. So that's a good break for Derek. Let's see if he can capitalize on the local court break. He's got a tie game in game one. First player is desperate to pull it home. Good get. Shane backs up. Another setup. Good get by Derek again. Set up off the back wall. Oh, Two bounces. Uh, Side out again, and Shane takes command of the service box. Derek's got to do more with those shots. You just can't keep flicking them to the ceiling and Love expect it. to Love turn around the point. At some point, you need to try and do something offensive with those shots. Is Getting it at this level is not good enough. Good angle there by Derek. He sensed Shane was moving a little too far forward, and Derek ripped a wide angle pass that totally stretched Shane out, forced him to leave his feet, and couldn't get it to the to the front wall. So he goes back to the service box. Derek Robinson still tied at 11. 
still game one. This has been a very interesting he game. This is indicative of where the match is going, Leaf. I think we're in for a real good one. A lot of drama. A lot of t twists and turns, different momentum shifts. A little Cinderella story on each side of the ball here. Uh, that's a bad miss. Now, by contrast, Derek just hit that ball out of the court, but he hit it directly out of the court without hitting the floor first. That's why he lost the serve and it was side out. And a terrible mistake. He, he needs control of the ball to get the last two points. Gives it back to the young Sugar Shane Vanderson. Good shot there by Derek. Oh, tremendous shot. The six foot four player all the way on the back wall. 11, 7, 11. Back wall set up for Derek off the back. Good get by Shane. Set up off the back wall for Derek. Set up for Shane. It's kind of fun racquetball for the crowd, but pretty sloppy racquetball. A lot of opportunities blown there. Let's look at this point and how many opportunities the players had here. Here's a setup off the back wall for Derek. He hits it back to the center, and he gets another forehand setup. There, Shane makes a good get. Here's a setup off the back wall for Derek. He leaves it in center court, and Shane hits the easy rekill. Great shot there by Shane. Well, back to live action just in time as Robinson hits the, the hardwood. Talk about the floor and the glass a little bit as they take a moment to dry it off. But you know, Aaron, it has other unique qualities that I've heard players talk about in the other semifinal. Husick's talking about the front right corner being soft. Yeah, I, I've heard that. I have not seen that. They've talked about the floor being a little softer than normal. I think the, the biggest thing is a very difficult glass wall on the right side because it's dark. They keep the lights off and it's very tough to see that ball on the right glass. So I think you see more players, whether they're right handed or left handed, trying to exploit that right glass wall. Great point. And that's probably true as we've seen a lot of action. Right side. Anderson now has a chance to win this one. And he skips the ball, goes back to Robinson. He's serving 12-11. Good shot there by Derek. Um, good down the line. Shane went all out, got to it, just couldn't quite get it to the front wall. Keeping the court dry. Shane is, uh, you know, this, I got to tell you, it's the first time I've seen Shane, Shane play since he was a junior. Um, phenomenally talented young player here. He's got a lead here on Derek and made a lot of very, very bad mistakes so far. So for him to be up 12-1 in the semis, 12-11 in the semis of the U.S. Open is uh, it's a testament to his ability. Point for Derek Robinson now tied at 12. Real good serve there by Derek. Derek doesn't have a big power serve that is going to go Sorry. blow by you. So he uses very good placement. And there was a perfect example. He just drove it deep into the corner, stretched Shane out, and forced the skip. He was at command of this first game. Set up for Derek. Well, he made it a little harder than he should have. He had the side wall. He had Shane caught in the middle, and he couldn't get it down the wall. Yet he still gets the point. Yep, probably one or two shots later than he should have, but he hung in there, played at, controlled the point, controlled center court. So now Derek Robinson has fought himself tooth and nail back to a position where he can win it again. A little recap, he was in charge of this first game, 10-6, and had five, six, or seven shots in the service box to put it away, could never do it. Shane, Shane Anderson came got back. up, had a chance to win it himself, didn't get it done. Uh, now here's Robinson again with 13, a chance to win 13, game one. 12. And to go back even a little bit in time, Leaf, before he was even up 10-6, he was cruising at 6-1, and Shane looked like he was not handling the moment well at all. Unfortunately for Derek, even though he's got a game point here, I think Shane is much more into this match than he was when it started. He handed him a comfort zone, and it may cost him. Eric Robinson serving for game one. 
set up for Shane here off the back wall. Wow, what a shot. shot that, that was unbelievable. Perfect rollout. I mean, that ball didn't come off the back wall very far, and Shane used his free hand, backed all the Whoa. way up to the glass wall, and just picked it clean about six inches off the back. Very aggressive on a point that he had to get. Slide out. Looking to tie it right here yet again. Oh, uh, bad miss by Derek. Oh, boy. What are you that is a terrible Two. call. That's a tough Come break. On, Jason. This ball Where skipped. I don't think there's any question about it. Derek had a setup. And there you see, it's tough to see even on that angle, but that ball hit the floor before the side wall and then actually rolled to the front wall, and you heard the crowd's reaction. That one, even I could see. Set up for Shane. Wow. And Derek Robinson fought his way to a 14-12 game one win. We'll come back with game two from Memphis, Tennessee, the Choice Hotels. U.S. Open Racquetball Championship. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Find me as a player. You would, you would, obviously, six foot four frame is going to be difficult to, to play against. And uh, you're going to have to put the ball down because I'm going to get everything. All right, there's Derek Robinson talking about what you've got to think about playing the Big D. And we've seen how tough it is, although he made it a little more difficult than maybe you would imagine as number eight seed Derek Robinson beat number 13 seed Shane Banderson. 14-12 to win game one. Leif Elsmo, Aaron Katz bringing our Tennis Channel exclusive coverage of the Choice Hotels U.S. Open Racquetball Championship to you. It's a five-event series. And we are in our second semifinal. And that game had a little bit of everything. Leaf. It had momentum shifts. It had great shots. It had bad shots. It had bad calls by the ref. Uh, very fortunate for Derek to get out of that game because he really so gave up. It was a very commanding lead. And that last point that we just saw as you were talking, Aaron, was exactly what he said you had to do against him. Shane kept the ball down very low, and he had a hard time getting it against the wall down low. And that's a great angle by Derek. Shane hit a not a very good shot, a relatively defensive shot, but Zero, Derek was kind of in an awkward position up front, and he hit a great cross-court pass with his backhand. Fanderson leading one, nothing, so it'd be Derek Robinson serving with no points to one. Derek with a dramatic dive, but on that first dive, it was as if he fell asleep in a bad position. He was well caught well front. Of the X made a great get. Shane hit a reverse pinch. Derek dives forward and gets it. Shane rips an angle. And Derek, who he, he understands that he might not have too many more opportunities to see the finals of the U.S. Open. What an effort for him. And, and he's going to leave everything on the court. And, and you, know, you got to respect it. Derek's 34, been playing the tour for 10 years. He's got one final appearance, never made it to the semis of the U.S. Open before. And now he's a game up in the semis looking at a a uh, final appearance in the U.S. Open, the biggest tournament in the world. It's a great weekend for him, and uh, he said as much in his post-game comments after he uh, won to come to the semifinal. That's one thing to dive as a racquetball player, but you don't find the six foot four. It's a little bit different in your dives. I mean, it's got to be a little more punishing on your body, Aaron. A lot more weight to throw around, a lot more bruising, and uh, a lot more distance to go down. He's certainly flopping a little more than like we saw with Kane, who dives and gets up. Yeah. You know, as quick as most people can just stay on their feet. That's another example of kind of a very young, loose mistake by Shane. A dead setup in the front of the court, doesn't move his feet. Winds up flicking his hands and missing a very easy recall opportunity. Set up off the back wall. Set up off the back wall for Derek. Side out. Boy, Shane is, I'm starting to empathize a little bit with Derek. He got no idea what to expect with Shane. One point, he hits a terrible shot, misses a setup, and then hits a very difficult backhand recall. And then hits a short serve. 
Gives the ball back to Derek Robinson. Serve opportunity. Yeah, but he is down. Has not scored yet in game two. Yeah, the best advice you can give Derek is just really focus on your game because I think it's going to be very difficult to predict what Shane is going to do. Looks like he's uh, changing his mind on his service approach. Backs up. Goes to the lob. And there's a great shot. He hit that lob right about where he wanted it. Got it nice and deep into the right wall. Wow. And Shane just splat rolled it. Very feast or famine we've seen so far from Shane. You'll watch the final later on in our series on the Tennis Channel, but these players, whoever wins here, has to come back in real time and play tomorrow. Two straight shorts there for Shane. Um, tough not to give yourself an opportunity to score. Good angle there by Derek. Maybe a little bit lucky got to get the crack off the side wall, but it was a good angle that was going to stretch Shane out anyway. So it's been a series of side outs, a ton of them. Not a bad serve. Derek used a serve you don't see too often in the pros. It's a jam serve where you go into the side wall and then bring the ball in on your opponent's body. Shane did get jammed on it, but was able to use very quick hands to push a kill shot. Good seal on ball by Derek. One. One. Had kind of a sloppy rally there again. Derek Robinson getting his first lead, two to one, one. now serving. One. This has been a very interesting match, but we have not seen the quality of play that we saw earlier with Huzak and Hold it Kane, Hold it. which had a very high level of concentration, high level of execution. This has been a little more in and out, a little one. sloppier. Still winner, very entertaining. And the winner gets to uh, challenge that athleticism. Uh, yeah, I don't envy the winner of this match. I think they might be in for a long afternoon tomorrow. Not only a tough competition, but less rest time. I started talking about that, but that yeah. other match was hours wow. ago. That's a really good point. And with Derek, who's 34 and playing more matches than he's accustomed to, that could be a significant issue. Shane at 22, I think he'll go grab a Diet Coke tonight and get some sleep and be fine tomorrow if he gets out of this match. Great get by Derek, set up for Shane. Boy, that is just so sloppy. I mean, that is just lazy play. I mean, Shane just stopped in the center of the court and struck the ball above his waist. He could have taken two steps back and had a setup in his in his power zone. Boy, that is that is sloppy play again. I mean, that's Shane hit a backhand splat, which was way up. Derek One, got caught a little bit flat-footed in the center of the court and didn't step up and cover the ball. Sugar Chain Vanderson. Somebody's got to take over this game. Yeah, no, nobody. Good get by Derek. Great shot by Shane. That's good ball movement by Shane. Mixed up his shots. He hit a splat. Stretched Derek out. Two, Derek got seven, to the two. ball, but floated it back through the center court, and then Shane fly killed it right down the line to end the rally. Good ceiling ball by Derek. That's a great shot because Derek was sitting on top of that. He was looking for that forehand splat because Shane. Here you'll see Derek hits a ceiling ball down the line. Shane backs up and he hits a forehand splat, and you'll see Derek go up to cover it. He just hit it too good. Back to live action. Good passing shot there by Derek. Once again, a bit of a lazy court position in there by Shane. He had a bad shot and just kind of got caught in no man's land up in the front court, allowing Derek to win with a cross court pass. And at this level, you very rarely want to let your opponent beat you with a cross court pass. Two, serving three. Skip ball, very close to a perfect shot by Vanderson, but skipped in off the side wall. He rolled, rolled in. Uh, good serve by Derek. He stuffed it in that back left corner. Never came out. All Shane can do is flick at it. And I'll knot it up at three. Whoa, another skip. And that was not a good serve by Derek. He missed that serve. He caught way more side wall than he wanted. Set. Shane up in the center of the court. Well, Derek has a chance to go on a little bit of a run here. 
Wow. That's three straight skips for Shane. You know, just, just to put it in perspective, we're playing 11 point games here, and Shane just skipped three straight points. Five, seven, you know, almost three. a third of a game he gave away. In a matter of about 60 seconds. And then three straight points. For Derek Robinson, the big D, they call him. Here he goes to the ceiling. Side out for Vanderson with a nice shot backhand up yeah, and close to, to the service box. And to Shane's credit, he showed the maturity there. He didn't try and force another shot. He went to the ceiling and actually brought Derek into the back of the court. Derek tried to do a little too much with the ball and gave Shane an opportunity up in the front court. Wow. wow. Tremendous backhand by the big guy. And that's the shot that he was just rolling yesterday in a, in a legendary Five, fashion seven, against Jason last night. And really the main culprit of the upset, that backhand splat. He definitely had the number one seed talking to himself. You know, and if you're Derek, you don't see that shot very often. That's a low percentage shot, and there's not many pros that are going for that these days. And Shane's hit it seven or eight times, and three or four of them effectively. And almost caught him by surprise, like you said. He's just not looking for it. Shane's at that awkward point in his pro career where I think he's given a lot of these guys trouble because his game is so unorthodox. But I think it's that unorthodoxy that's probably going to lead to inconsistency. And as I think as he plays the tour and matures as a player, he's going to start playing much higher percentage racquetball. This will be a big part of his building and learning curve. Good get by Derek, set up off the back wall. Set up again. Oh, shot. Side out. Trying to dry off the court here. This is one of the unique things about racquetball. The court is hardwood. Take a look at this last point. Look at how wet Derek Robinson is. And you see Derek hit a pretty good serve. Great get there. Spins Shane around off the back wall. Again, Derek covers it, and Shane steps up and buries that backhand pinch. Derek's very into the match. He's digging, he's clawing, he's playing every point out. He's not skipping many balls. Shane is great one point, bad the next two, great the next two. Uh, as you would expect, a younger player versus a veteran player, you're seeing way steadier play out of Derek. But by contrast, you've probably seen more spectacular shots by Shane. It's tough to get a game plan against somebody who's so inconsistent. Yeah, no, I, I agree. There's his third short serve of this game. So, Leaf, not to pick on Shane too much, but, but this, you is, are. this is a good lesson for anybody at home. That's three times he's been in the service box and right. hit it short, did not give himself an opportunity to score his point, and three times he skipped the ball while returning serve to give his opponent a free point. Great get there. Smart shot by Derek. And Shane Vanderson ends up winning the point off a tremendous effort, maybe the best rally of this match. Yeah, he, yeah, every, you'll see Shane ended here with a great overhead splat. Before the splat, there's a flick by Derek, set up by Shane. And here's the shot that ends it. No, a couple of later. Great get there by Shane off the back wall. Derek has the presence of mind to hit a good ceiling ball here. And then here Shane is going to hit that forehand splat. And Derek just can't get up and cover it. At the live action. Vanderson with the side out. Good shot there. A nice side out by Robinson. Yeah. He comes up to the... Yeah, good glass wall. Yep, and good ball movement by Derek. It was left right. He drove the ball down the left wall with his backhand, forced Shane to go into the side wall, and then stepped up and re-killed his forehand. Robinson finally gets point number six. 
Working hard to get there, though. Yeah, he's, he's working hard. He is playing a very disciplined, mature match. He's working hard every point, uh, letting Shane make some mistakes and playing, I think, playing a little bit conservative. He's very conscious. He doesn't want to give up any free points. Robinson serving at 5-3. Still needs to get the same points. I think I got that as a side out again. I gave him a point on that. It's a great serve by Derek. Getting that lob serve deep to the forehand. Shane barely can scrape it off the back was wall. This, I'm watching the scoreboard where it was wrong. So it is 7-3 now, and that's a nice little run for Robinson. Five points in a row. There's another skip. So a timeout on the floor. Eight to three the score. Timeout by Shane Vanderson. We'll take a short break and come back with more of our Choice Hotels U.S. Open Racquetball Championships from Memphis, Tennessee. Welcome back to the 2003 Choice Hotels U.S. Open Racquetball Championships. Take a moment to talk about a very special part of the tournament here in Memphis, Tennessee. The pros take and make their annual trip to the St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital, which was established to conduct research into catastrophic children's illnesses throughout the years. Thousands of patients have gone through there and benefited. Over $100,000 given by this tournament to that well deserving cause, St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital right here in Memphis, Tennessee. Three, Tremendous day for the pros to stop by and give their support to the staff and to the patients. Meanwhile, back at center court, the portable court made exclusively for this Grand Slam event. Eight serving three. Eight serving three, Derek Robinson. The number eight seed against Shane Vanderson, number 13, playing for the right to go to the finals. Derek Robinson already up one game. Wants to get game two in the win column. Vanderson tough making it tough. Yeah, tough shot there. Derek hit the right shot. He drove his forehand down the line. Shane hung in there and hit a nice retail. Still a long road back here. Shane down 8-3. Uh, much of his own doing, but he's going to hang in there and try and claw back like he did the first game. It was a great, great sequence right there. There, he looked like a world beater. He had a great serve, forced Derek to flick to the ceiling, and then rolled out a backhand splat. Get to four. It's been a long time since Shane Vanderson got a point, so that's good news for him. He's been working he, hard. Yeah, I think he was up 3-2 and went down 8-3. Eight, 8-3, eight, three. Eight, three, absolutely. Skipped it. That's a rare skip for Derek. He got a little off balance. Shane serve Five, came off the back eight. wall, jammed him a little bit. I think Derek tried to do a little too much with the ball by pinching it. Probably should have hit it down the line or across court. So two straight points for Super Shane. Good get. Wow, Derek Robinson All looks right. like he almost got hurt. Yeah, it looked like he slipped on a wet spot. He was leaning oh. the wrong way, too. He thought Shane was going to pinch the ball. So Aaron Sola doesn't slip. Let's take a look. Yeah, he, he makes a great get here. Now Shane's set up. I think Derek thinks he's going to pinch the ball. It's tough to... Let's take a second look. It's tough to tell whether the court was wet or he was leaning forward on the pinch. He gets a great get. There's Shane set up. I think it may have been the wet court. Looks like his back foot came out from underneath him. Hard hit, though, for the big guy. Six oh, foot yeah. four. That's a falling tree. And it really shows you how, what great shape these guys are in. I mean, and as they get the court all dried up, you can see where we are perched right up here, this beautiful setup at the Memphis Racquet Club. Lee Felsmo, Aaron Katz right with me. The, Ex-great pro from the professional tour in racquetball. And this event, especially of the USRA and Doug Gannon, and it's exclusively on the Tennis Channel this year. Five separate events, five separate weeks as we do the men's semifinals, women's finals, men's finals, and the legends, which is a great event in itself. But today, it's Robinson against Shane Vanderson. 
Anderson serve. Back wall. Boy, this, this is the best run I think Shane's had in both games. Yeah, well, he, points. he was down 8-3, and now it's 7-8, and this game is looking spookingly like the first game. If you remember, Derek was up 6-1. Shane had made a lot of errors. This game, Derek was up 8-3, the same five-point spread. Similarly, Shane had made a lot of errors, and then Shane, out of nowhere, gets four straight points, several on just tremendous shots, and he's right back in it at 7-8. See what happens. He'll have the serve as they continue to dry off the court. Sanders, or Shan, uh, Vanderson, Shane Vanderson, <laughs> really has Derek Robinson diving a lot. How many dives? Probably not his style. And here he is letting it all go in this uh, tournament. Yeah, no, he, Derek knows what's at stake here. And I, I think Shane does in a way, even though at age 22, Shane might not have the same uh, sense of desperation that Derek does at 34. Anderson serving 7-8. There's a, a short, short serve. serve. We've seen that more than once tonight. That's a, at least his fifth short serve, and I think that's being Eight. conservative. Seven. I know he had three in this game before that, so that's at least his fourth this game and probably another one or two in the first. Derek Robinson strapping on his ankle brace. Left ankle, you can see, wrapped. Derek's a warrior. You can't play out there in this at this level for 10 or 12 years like Derek has without being very mentally tough and being a warrior. He's in great physical condition, trains very hard. Great get there by Shane. Set up for Derek. Great get again by Shane. He, if I didn't recognize him, I think there was a different player coming on and off the court, Leaf. There's a tremendous point for Shane, where he hung in there, played very smart, flicked a couple of defensive shots to the ceiling, and then the first offensive opportunity he got, he had a very delicate recall in the right corner. I'll tell you, Robinson had about as good a right hand, like you, you, you know, you want to have time to set it up, get a good power to the backside. And still, Vanderson was able to dive over backhand and get the ball. Yep. He's, Shane has phenomenal ability. Seven, seven, eight. You take a look at this point. Shane made some great gets. That's They're the totally head out. Here's another forehand set up for Derek. There he another is, great get. Now, Derek makes a mistake here by going cross court, and Shane hits a nice reach go right up front. There's a great get by Derek. Lucky bounce. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That was a mistake by Derek. Derek anticipated great. He ran up, covered Shane's forehand pinch, had all the time in the world, and then hit a very awkward shot right back to Shane, and Shane was able to kill it right down the line. I, I think Derek was surprised. You look how quickly Derek gets up on the pinch shot here. There's Derek's shot. But look when... Here he hits a great shot. Shane's going to pinch this one. Look how Derek gets up early, anticipates it. He leaves. He's waiting on it and pushes it back to Shane, and Shane's got an easy down-the-line kill. Derek should have re-killed that backhand up front, either into the left corner or down the left wall. So Robinson got himself in position to make the play. Then he has to make the follow-up shot a little bit better than he is. Absolutely. I, I think Derek was surprised. He left so early on Shane's shot. I don't think he expected Shane to hit it right to him. It puts the game two at 8-8. Eight, eight. Robinson with one win. Good shot there by Shane. Right shot there. Shane needs to mix up his forehand a little bit. He's hitting everything either pinch or cross court. And while those are two different shots, they both wind up on.